Now, the locally-led campaign to change the law on primates being owned as pets will need to take a new course of action after the government rejected a ban. Calls from Monkey World in Wareham, supported by the South Dorset MP Richard Drax, were dismissed in Parliament this week. The Rescue Centre says there's been a huge increase in the number of primates in the UK being owned as pets. And the parliamentary debate was triggered by a petition calling for a change in the law. The director of Monkey World, Dr Alison Cronin, says it's an accelerated catastrophe. And she joins me on the line now. Alison, good morning. Good morning. What do you mean by accelerated catastrophe? Um, Well, since the park opened 30 years ago, you know, we've rescued over 100 primates from the British pet trade. But more than 50 of those have been in the last five years. So we're talking like, you know, more than a 100 percent. It's an exponential increase in the number of primates that were being called, usually by well-meaning, nice people who have bought them, who have been duped. Hmm. and have bought these animals thinking that they're going to make ideal pets from breeders and dealers at huge prices. Some people buy them for up to £1,700 and then find out that the animals get sick, that they're lonely, that they don't do well living in a birdcage in their sitting room. And then we get the call to pick up the yeah. pieces because people are distraught. And there are no rules at the moment. There's, there's, nothing, there's no special treatment for primates. So you, can just, you can just buy one of these things and keep it however you like? Not for, there are no regulations um, for the purchase and um, of 66 different species of small primates. So that's all of the marmosets, all of the tamarind monkeys, and all of the squirrel monkeys. When you start talking about larger species, there is an act called the Dangerous Wild Animals Act that sort of has laws and regulations that really are there to protect the safety and welfare of people, Mm. but not the actual care and keeping of these primates. But um, one thing I wanted to address, Steve, in your opening there, it's actually even worse than you suggested, because we're not calling for a ban. In fact, Monkey World has taken a very moderate stance on this, because it is possible if you have enough time and money to keep these animals correctly. Well, your petition, you collected 110,000 signatures asking for uh, primates to be guaranteed the same standard of care as they would do if they were kept in That's zoos right. or wildlife so not, parks. not a ban. Yeah. We're just saying all we want is for them to be looked after properly. So even if you're a private owner... That's okay, but you should have to meet the same high standard of care as zoos or wildlife parks. Now, that might sound extraordinary or extreme, but not if you consider that these are very small primates usually. Um, And, you know, it is possible, like I said, if you have enough time or money to set them up properly if you have appropriate sort of, you know, indoor, outdoor yeah. facilities and keep them in social groups. So we, we've spoken about this before. It, it came to Parliament earlier this week uh, and you had the backing, as I say, of these 110,000 signatures on your petition, yeah, uh, right. South Dorset MP Richard Drax. The Environment Minister, George Eustace, uh, had this to say, that more could be done to deal with inadequate conditions, uh, but that a new law isn't needed. I appreciate that he'll be disappointed that I've not gone as far as he or she would like in terms of adopting the type of licensing regime he proposes, Uh, but I do hope that he'll continue to work with us as we strengthen the prominence and the profile uh, of the uh, Primates Code uh, within the Animal Welfare Act so that we can tackle some of the problems that he's highlighted this evening. Do you you think that's a way forward to look at the Primates Code within the Animal Welfare Uh, Act? Steve, you know what? He's been... The the government, both governments, both um, Conservative and Labour, have said these same words for, like I said, for the past 25 years. Um, You know, before Jim passed away, who founded Monkey World, um, we submitted a petition, it must have been 15, maybe even 20 years ago, of 66,000 signatures at that point in time, actually asking for a ban on the trade because so many primates were suffering. And in all of those years, 20 or more years, nothing has changed, nothing has happened and we've watched an exponential increase in well-meaning people getting ripped off, animals suffering, people getting upset and having their money stolen from them, in effect. So, really, it's a lot of waffle and empty words, because, it, you know, and, and, and I was sort of surprised, and I imagine Richard Drax's as well, because George Eustace took a meeting with Richard and I 
um, in June last year following the handing in of the petition, because at that point in time, David Cameron was impressed enough that he actually asked his minister to sit down and talk to us. So we met with him, which was quite extraordinary, and he said that he was going to review it and that he would have liked to have created a register for these animals, like they have for dangerous dogs, okay. where at least then we could regulate and check and make sure that they were being kept properly. But apparently that was all hot air and empty words because the animals are still suffering and people are still getting ripped off. People are still